Hey everybody, this is Patrick McNeil from Oak City Locksport and welcome back to our series on repinning. Today we're going to continue our repinning series and talk about repinnable padlocks. I really like the padlock form factor just because it's portable, it's easier to hold than the little kick cylinders and it's just less likely to get uh, lost if it's kicking around in your bag. And I'll even put some on a carabiner or one of these little wire keychains so I can just keep them all together in one spot in your bag. Though I will say if you're going through TSA with something like this, you're going to want to pull it out and put it in a separate container because it's very dense and they're definitely going to want to see what it is. Um, the other thing with padlocks is typically you're going to have to fight some spring tension as you turn with the tension wrench. And that is just something that you're not going to experience with a kick cylinder. So it's just an important, you know, other aspect uh, to practice. Um, I like these American locks just because they, you know, have five or six pins and they do come with a pretty interesting variety of pins. So you'll see here, these are some pins that I've pulled out of other locks and you'll see that there are some um, spool pins here. These are driver pins and then these here are serrated uh, driver pins. The other, the other part that's cool about these American ones is you'll see these key pins have some serrations at the top of them. Uh, this one is is non-serrated, but you'll have a, a wider variety of interesting security pins to try to get through. So whether you're dealing with an American or something else, the first question of course is how can you tell if it is repinnable? So if we look at the bottom, you'll see that you've got this metal trap plate here so that's that's certainly one indicator and then you've also got this uh, retaining cap so this retaining cap fits in through the plate and then there should be a screw behind this portion of the shackle down inside where the shackle fits in so if you have one of these locks and you have a key for it or you can pick it open you can very quickly see whether or not uh, it is repinnable or not. So let's open this one up and let's see what are we looking for here. So get my flashlight out and if we look down in there you can see the ball there on the right and then there's a Phillips head screw down there in the bottom. So now I know I can make a progressive set. So and that's that's exactly what these are right here. These are all American 1100 series and I got different colors. There's a lot of different places online where you can find these in, in multiple colors. Um, so I did red, green, blue. So one pin, two pin, three pin, four pin. And um, you will find these 1100 series in two different varieties. You can find the 1105, which is a five pin lock or the 1165 which is a six pin. Um, honestly, you could get the six pin one. They're slightly more expensive, but if you get the five pin lock and we'll, we'll see this in a little bit, they're drilled out for six pins anyways. So as you dump pins out of the lower range of progressives, you can end up putting them into your higher range. So you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, just all made from uh, 1105s. So these, 1100 series as well. These are actually a type of lock that is called a lockout tag out lock. So it's not necessarily for security. These are made for safety. So you would typically find these on a piece of machinery that needs to be temporarily serviced on a one or more power switches. And each technician should have their own key. So if there are multiple people working on the machine, no one person can turn it on and, and cause injury. So even while these are, you know, not necessarily intended for security, I still find that the pin out or the, the pinning for these and, and the quality of, of the workmanship tends to be better than a master three or num or, or master five. So I'll put these on, on some things. Um, note also that this is unlocked. This is key retaining. So the key can't come out. And if we look at, when we take the key out, you'll notice that there are two notches here. 
and these notches actually keep the key from rotating more than 90 degrees. So this is important to keep in mind as you are picking this lock that you don't rotate it 180 degrees because the pins that are coming down from the top here, when you rotate it all the way around, they're going to be driven down into the bottom part of the core, which is open. And now you're going to have to try to get all of the key pins depressed back up into uh, the Bible so you can then you know rotate it around. There is a chance that you could see some uh, spring damage when you do that. Uh, and you may not even be able to get this unlocked again. So just uh, make sure that when you are picking, you only turn it that, that 90 degrees. Um, just from a, a picking perspective, I like to get these keyed differently. So then you have a variety of keys and you can repin them uh, just, you know, to, to a variety of, uh, you know, different, yeah, different settings. So you, you have, have more, more interesting things to pick. And then I've found personally that having some sort of a pry bar, whether you make something homemade out of, say, a bicycle spoke or, or windshield wiper blade, these tend to work best on these Americans uh, just for doing, you know, top of keyway tension. The little bit of warding that's in there, it just makes it a lot easier uh, to get, you know, kind of your full, full range of motion when you're trying to pick them. Um, so let's take one of these apart. Let's take this one apart. And really the only thing that I need to take this apart, uh, this is a homemade plug follower. It's just uh, the, the measurement for this is 0.385. I made it from a 3 8 inch dowel and I cut one little notch out of this. So basically just, you know, half, half of that little circle you cut out and that's to fit on the back of the plug. So let's go ahead and unlock it. And this screw will sometimes be a little tight on the first go around because it's got some blue Loctite on it. So we'll dump that out. You can see where there was some blue Loctite on there. And then we'll grab this retaining cap and you'll see this plate comes right out in theory there we go so there's a little trick here when we go to put this back in you got to make sure to put the the plate on and rotate the key before you insert it again that's one of the hardest things that newbies run into when run reassembling so now that I've got this out I can turn the key to the position where I can remove it drop the plate and then to take off the circlip on the rear I like to keep the key inside of the lock because it gives you something to hang on to so as we did in the other parts of the series turn it 90 degrees to the right I know where the pins are they're over here and I can hold on to this and because I'm so low budget I've got a pair of pliers here that I'm going to use to pop this off and just kind of rock it, rock it back and forth. If you can get some purchase on it. Here we go. Okay, so pins are up here and match up the notches. There we go. Okay, so as promised, here you go. You can see that there are five pins in this and there's actually a sixth hole drilled out um, th that was not something I dumped out already so this is a 1105 suitable for 
uh, or set up for five pins and you can definitely pop another one in there if you'd like. And we can also see on the bottom here, six pins as well. So you know what to do from here. You just cover up the uh, pins you want to keep and rotate these out and dump the rest of them. Same thing for the uh, driver pins that are in the Bible. Just slowly back out the um, uh, back out the plug follower on, I would say, the back side here, and dump out any driver pins and springs uh, so you can get to the progressive set. So that's pretty much it. But let's put this back together so I can show you the little trick to get this back together again. And put the circlet back on. Okay. So as I said, you want to put the key in with the little tab facing downward. So we had inserted and turned to unlock it. So that's what we're going to do here. Insert turn so now the tab is facing down and you see the bibles up here at the top so that when we stick it back in here uh, i should i should point out before i put this back in here um, you will see on these 1100 series in the very back you can see that this is this is open if i can do this without blinding you um, so the back of the lock here, this little nub that sticks out, fits into the actuator in the back. And there is a known vulnerability for this and actually a bypass tool for the Americans. So you can sneak past all of the pins and actually hit that actuator directly to open it right up. That was patched. They put in a very, very thin piece of metal that's a bypass restrictive plate. Um, I have ordered these locks in bulk and oddly enough, even though this vulnerability has been around for quite some time, I have gotten some that have the restrictive plate and some that don't. So I would say if, if you are going to be relying on these and you don't uh, want them to be bypassed, then take it apart, take a look and see if it's in there or not until you find one that actually has the plate. So as you saw, I, I dropped that little nub in here put the uh, cap in. Come on, magnetic screwdriver, there we go. And good to go. Thanks for joining and uh, please like and subscribe.